Oh, we're live food service power plant network. Welcome to Monday night, my favorite night of the week, hopefully yours. Uh, I don't know what your weekend hope, but whatever you needed, I hope you got it. Perhaps it was an element of rest you needed. Perhaps it was an element of connection that you needed with some other people in your life. Maybe you need to just get outside and get some vitamin D. I hope you got that. Molly and I got to walk. I hope you had uh, time to dream a little bit and think big about where you're going, what you want to do, who you want to be, all that kind of stuff. And uh, and you're cruising into Monday. By now, let's see, it's 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Hopefully, you're in fourth or fifth gear, just cruising ready to crush the rest of the week. And we're really glad that you're with us. You know, tonight is going to be another awesome conversation. I truly feel like the luckiest person on the planet. The people I get to speak with, the conversations we get to have, the things we get to learn together as an industry. Tonight, we've got our buddy Tommaso. Tommaso Cardano is coming on. Uh, He is the ambassador for Host Milano in the United States. So we're going to talk all things host. You know, Host Milano is a show I've known about ever since I've entered the industry in 2008, but I've never been. So um, I've always been so curious. I mean, Milan, Italy, are you kidding me? And then like the biggest show in the world, over 4 million square feet of exhibitors showing their product, people seeing what's new, learning the trend, trying the food. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to like kind of have the veil lifted on what this show is about for me um, and get a better understanding through Tommaso. Uh, Tommaso, of course, also has Thompson Hospitality down in Florida. He's going to teach us a little bit about him and his life. He is the um, the president, let's see, of the American Chamber of Italy down in Florida. He's going to teach us about that. I probably totally butchered that representation, but he's going to guide us on that. And we've got some friends. Are you kidding me? Zena Dater's in the house out of Oklahoma. Hi, Zena. We're glad you're here. Zandy is in the house. Looking forward to this one. Holy smokes. The host show is amazing. I love it. Hearing it, listen, um, before we bring Tommaso on, which is going to be awesome, a couple of things. Uh, you might grab a notepad and pen because he's got things uh, about whether host that you might need to take back to your company and say, hey, team, we got to be here. We either have to go exhibit or we need to go learn or Tommaso's probably got some things in his story. He's, I call him the international man of mystery. He's like involved in so many things in food service. He's got a family with four kids. I don't know how he does it all. So we're going to learn about him. And there's probably things in his story that will be helpful for you. Uh, secondly, listen, thanks to the people that helped make this happen. First, thanks to Host Milano for believing in this conversation and having T- Tommaso on and letting us tell more of your story. Thanks to the team at Zumba Group. Zumba, uh, we couldn't be more thankful for you and your partner- partnership to let these conversations happen. Uh, and also to the team at Crave, Chelsea and that team, you are doing a wonderful job building our website and helping um, just grow this message of positive mindset tools in the industry and a sense of connection. By the way, every one of our conversations, we've had over, over 100 now, they're at our website that Crave built, fspowerplant.com. Go check them out. Um, okay, you ready? Let's go find, oh, William Bender's in the house. Yo, William, good to see you, brother. Let's go find the man, the myth. Tommaso! Hello, Jason. Good evening. Hey, How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor and a pleasure. You know what? The honor is all mine. I can't wait to learn. I mean, it's truly host is like another world. You know, it's 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 like always been something that has felt so real. Everyone talks about it. I feel like the people that go are like people that got the golden ticket in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like, oh my gosh, you're going to host Milano. So I can't wait to learn more about it from you. Yeah. You should definitely come this year. Uh, I'm I'm going to find a way. We're going to plan on it. Particularly, you're here with us. I can't wait. Um, so I will find a way. You will be there. Okay, got it. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> Vivia's in the house. Vivia, hi. It's so great to see you. Nick, Moat, evening. Nick, yo, what's up, my man? So great to see you. Kevin's here. Love the FSPN conversation. Excited here, Tommaso. Kevin, what's up, brother? Here's another one. Hello, Tommaso. Love the host show. Truly a world-class experience, which I highly recommend attending. Tommaso does an amazing job representing the show. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Tommaso, before we jump on real quick, let me see if I can find out who that is. And uh, because I'm trying, I want to try to honor everybody who's in watching with us right now. Let's see. Oh, we're live. Here we go. That was... Brad Pierce. Brad Pierce. I was not feeling that was Brad. <laughs> I love it. Tommaso, Jeremy Matola's in the house. So good. Jeff Yates, come with Scott and I, Jason. We're definitely going. The boys from San Francisco are coming, Tommaso. Watch out. Uh, we are ready. Love this. Hello? I'm so, is, what's grande? Uh, it's, it's big. It's like uh, to say it's, it's good. It's good. Great. Hey. Good. Very good. 
Maurizio, great to see you. Tommaso, listen, um, fill me in a little bit about your story real quick. We want to hear about your career journey and how you got connected with Host Milano. Yeah, I I, born, I was born and raised uh, in um, in Italy. I grew up there. I did my uh, my old my education, college degree there, and uh, then I move uh, I moved to Venezuela for a master degree there, okay. and uh, yeah, in Caracas. I spent uh, a good year there, having a lot of fun and learning a lot. And I start working by by coincidence in the food service industry there because I come from a region where there's is very famous for stainless steel manufacturing. And there was a lot of companies there. So since I have some free time during my master's degree, I get in touch with a few companies and I start working with one of them in, in Venezuela. After that, I, I wanted to go back to university, but then to get a, my second degree. But when I realized the amount of time I had to spend on the books, I say, no, maybe not. And, and it was a funny coincidence. When I stepped into the university to, to get some information, I, I was ended like a pamphlet with the last minute star internships program. So when I realized there was too much to study, I was looking at the piece of paper in my hand and there was a internship to the Italy America Chamber of Commerce in Miami. And I say, okay, why not? I'm gonna go there, um, improve my English and having an experience for three months internship. So I went there, I did three months internship. Uh, the plan of improving the English didn't really work because it was Miami, of course. So <laughs> between <laughs> Italian and Spanish, uh, my, my English is as bad as it was 20 years ago. And, uh, and then I work uh, with the Italy America Chamber for uh, yeah, for one year. And then I start working more with this uh, uh, company that was doing basically pots and pan. I, I, I grew up, I organized their US market. And then I, I did my step in the entrepreneurial world, launching Thompson Hospitality back in 2007 and eight, selling at the beginning pots and pan from the trunk of my car. And then the company growing, growing, growing. And about 10 years ago, uh, for some common friends, I got in touch with the people from host and they were running a program inviting buyers uh, to the show. And it was like a few months before the show. And they asked me, oh, can you help us bring in some qualified buyer to the show? I said, sure, no problem. Uh, what do I need to do? No, just invite them. We're going to take care of everything. The flight, the hotel, they just need to come to the show, do some meetings and just the show. I say, okay. I mean, that sounds too good to be true, but let me try. So I, I called. 20 of my contacts and everybody was trying that this, this Italia was offering something too good to be true. And I say, no, no, it's actually a legit offer. And that's the way we start. Uh, since, I mean, I, I, I mean, in the industry, I had a lot of contacts. We start like this with a small program, 20, 30 people, and then in grow up to fully represent a uh, host uh, in the old continent and uh, North America, Latin America, running the trade show with them or the communication, the marketing or the promotion and create partnership. Uh, in the industry. After almost 10 years of working, I think that the host brand gets some recognitions and here we are tonight. Holy smokes, Tommaso. What a story. Yeah. I love how many of us fall in to food service kind of, you know, sort of by accident yeah. or you end up with a pamphlet or whatever. And I also love how, how many stories begin with schlepping pots and pans or whatever it is, you know, just driving around in your car and just yeah. making it happen in your growth and kudos. Um, for Host Milano to put that program together, the buyer program, so that yeah. you could end up there, see the magic that is, and now you get to you got to experience something wonderful, and now you get to tell the world about it. I think it's amazing. No, it's a, it's a great experience. It's a learning experience. It's fun. It's, uh, it's something I would recommend to everybody in our industry. Well, I, I think we're going to get, hopefully the goal, part of this is that we all take an American crew over and we're all having the best pizza in uh Milan together over there in some awesome bar is one of my goals. Definitely. I mean, the fact of Milan is already another great reason just to come to the show and visit the city, enjoy the city, the art, uh, the museum, the nightlife, the food, of course. It just, it's just going to be a very fun three, four days. Tell me, um, okay, let, give us some nuts and bolts on host Milano. You and I were doing the math yeah. before we went live. This show is approximately... Four million square feet of exhibitors. Is that right? Is that correct? So is a is a is a show that is extended on five days, and is in one of the biggest uh, is one of the biggest um, trade show area in in the world. I would say one of the biggest exhibition center in the world, which by itself is a destination because it's been designed by Fuscas, which is a very famous architect, and um, he, he has one big out, outdoor aisle which is uh, about, uh, is one kilometer. 
So it's more or less, I don't know, almost 10 uh, football fields in length. And on the both side of this hill, there's 20 pavilion, 20 holes. Okay, each hole is about 200,000 square feet. And, uh, and, and it's just, and in the middle, there is a sail made of glass, which is an architectural uh, point, and, it, and it's amazing. Made, it's made by 40,000 pieces of glass, and it's like 400,000 square feet of glass. It's just beautiful. Just it's itself is just a very iconic, uh, iconic place. Um, this year, there's going to be about 1,400 exhibitors from 43 different countries. Uh, and they're basically divided in three macro areas of exhibition. Uh, the food service equipment, bakery, pizza, and pasta, which is one area. Another area for coffee, gelato, bar, vending, and pastry. So imagine having just one hall only of gelato equipment and one other hall just of coffee equipment. So you, you can start your morning in the coffee area with one espresso after the other one. And then you can finish your day in the gelato area with uh, one testing after another one. And then you have the other area, the third area, which is uh, technology, furniture, and, uh, and tabletop. So the mix is more or less 50% uh, food service equipment, about 30% coffee, gelato, and pastry, and about 20% between furniture, technology, and, uh, and tabletop. Uh, on Over the five years, you have about 110,000 visitors. These are the numbers of 2021 from 144 different countries. I didn't even know there was 144 different countries when, when I was looking at the number. And then I check and there's actually 195 countries in the world. So it's actually over 70% of the world is, uh, is covered there. And it's for sure the, the biggest uh, food service and hospitality event uh, in, in the world. It's definitely a destination uh, when you want to discover the new trend, uh, what's going in Europe, but basically what's going on in the world. And I think one very good definition of host is where the world meets the world. Because really, you can see everything there. You can see new product, new product. You can see client. You can see uh, supplier from really all over the world. You can have uh, uh, you, you can have training. You can do benchmarking between competitors and between manufacturers. You can build relationship. You can build really an international network. And I think it, it's uh, is a unique uh, opportunity. And and of course, a lot of the items are not available in, in the U.S. market. But even just going there and see those items and see those trends is is per se a learning experience. And then there's a lot of opportunity to bring new products to the market or for American company to uh, uh, put a window out there. And it's not only a window to Europe; it's a window to the world. So it, it's it's definitely an, an amazing an amazing opportunity. There's so many questions and, and thoughts here. Milan in this show is amazing. Absolutely love it. That's our buddy, Jeremy Matola. Jeremy, what is up, brother? Um, first of all, like, I, I feel like going into the pavilion with the gelato and the espresso and the pastries is going to take some serious restraint. So maybe like the month prior, we'll all do, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll practice habits. So, okay, you can have, we can have three espressos before we're just going to be wired the entire time, whatever that is. Yeah. And this year they have some uh, competition. I have him some notes because there's so many competition. There's a competition by the most important luxury pastry in the world, the Gino Massari. Uh, there's uh, another competition. There's the World Top world, world Trophy or Pastry, Gelato, and Chocolate. There's the World Trophy or Professional Tiramisu. There's Cake Designer World Championships. So there's a lot of events that goes uh, around us. There's several different seminars, workshops. On different topics, some of them very formal in, in, in an area, some other like more casual during the happy hour with a nice uh, Negroni in Milan. So there, there's a little, lot of uh, interactivity. It's not only exhibiting, it's just uh, uh, create relationship, learning. Uh, is, is, is more than just, just a regular trade show with the space and, and booth uh, uh, boot to visit. And then there's, of course, there's the party. Parties at the show, party after... Uh, at the end of the show, uh, booth that become like almost uh, uh, bars and music, entertaining. It's it's a fun event. Oh my gosh, this is it. Sounds just fascinating. The people you get to meet, the like sort of the culinary brilliance you get to see, and the creativity that you get to experience um, is unmatched. Look at this, Uruguay. and uh, and uh, and the US is definitely one of the most uh, represented, not European country, uh, both as exhibitor but also as a, as a visitors. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's a big, uh, it's a big part of the show. 
I love that people in the U.S. recognize it. I mean, so often what people are doing all over the world are different than we are um, in some ways more efficient. I mean, we're always learning, right? Everywhere we go, every time I have dinner at a friend's house, I'm learning something about how the way their family operates. I'm like, oh, maybe we should try that. We should have a different kind of schedule, right? And this is true in all of our lives. Anytime we're hanging out with people or we go to learn, we're going to bring things back that we need, that can teach us, that can educate us. Look who is watching Deirdre Flynn is in the house. That makes my day. Deirdre of Napham, of course, you know, it, it's it, it's such a great, um, I mean, Deirdre, of course, Napham is the U.S.'s biggest equipment show. Yes. Um, not even close, massive. We were all just down there, of course, in Orlando, and it was nice. the biggest show they've cool. ever Damn. had. Great job, D. Um, and I'm sure so many people will come over to come and learn. I mean, no, and it's a great, I mean, it's a great example of the great relationship that we have been developed uh, in, uh, in the U S market. Uh, we have been close with, with nothing. There are great people there. And I think the two shows are, are complementary each other's. Uh, sometimes people, the show are, are j- shows in general can be competitors, but I don't believe so. I think that they're very complementary because they're two different approach. Uh, to to the same market and with Nafem you have a fantastic overview of the U.S. market. I mean, we just be there at the show last time we met, and I think it was was probably the best Nafem I ever seen. It was fantastic, and uh, and and there's a lot of synergy uh, between the two shows. With with Feda Feda we have another amazing partnership. They're being uh, they're being great um, with us. They're being great in working together with us, promoting the host brand and doing uh, activities together. So it's um, um, it's definitely uh, a, a, an event that has been recognized and an event that has been enjoyed by, by many people in, uh, in, in North America, but also in, in the old continent. Tommaso, tell me this. Uh, our buddy Kevin uh, with Zumba Group, FNS Magazine, Restaurant uh, Design and Development, everybody. Kevin yeah. um, is saying, wow, I need to find my way to host Milano in October. And Kevin, I'll yeah. see you there, brother. We'll have some gelato, and I'm only good maybe for one or two espressos before I start feeling just all jittery. But uh, we'll share those. But here's a great question, lead-up question. Tommaso, who should who who goes to host Milan? Like, who would you encourage from the States to, to head over there? I mean, I'm sure it's manufacturers, it's distributors, it's operators, it's Kevin. Who would you say it's great for? I mean, for uh, definitely for the, for manufacturers is is the best place to showcase your product internationally. Um, we have basically all the main manu- all the manufacturers, U.S. manufacturers are, are there exhibiting and promoting them internationally. Um, and as far as attendees, it's a show for everybody. Is um, from distributors, importers, dealers, um, food service consultant, operators, chef. Uh, uh, even 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 manufacturer rep just to learn more. Uh, it's really a real learning learning experience. And then um, host of this amazing program of this VIP uh, buyers program, uh, where basically they um, do a selection of highly qualified buyer, and these buyer are invited by the show to go to Italy and with all expenses covered. The fly, the accommodation, the meals, the transfer to the show, everything is paid for. Uh, the only commitment that host wants is that these people will actually go to the show and, and make some, some meetings. And actually, they have a fantastic platform uh, where you can register in advance and you're Jason and you're looking, I don't know, for a refrigerator or an oven or, or maybe some banquet equipment. And then you automatically create a matching with company exhibiting their prog- their product. And then you can create your agenda and then you have these five meetings per day that you, you can do. And then you I mean you can do much more than that. And I think it's, it's, it's been, has been great. It's, it's a tool that's very well appreciated. And uh, this year we're gonna bring over 120 uh, people. Uh, we start, like I mentioned before, the first time I start with our contacts and then the, for the second edition, we, we partnered up with FEDA for the first time and Brad, Brad was president back then. And uh, and the challenge to to have this this program understood is that it was just too good to be true. You say, well, where is the scam here? There's an Italian offering like a trip to Italy. What should I do? Nothing. Just visit the show. And it was actually it was actually a very good experience. Since then, we grow we grow a lot. And a lot of people that they get invited the first time, they say, I mean, I don't want to get. I mean, I, I don't care about the invitation anymore. I, I had such a great experience that I want to go by myself. Is is uh, it's an amazing show. So um, I really encourage, I mean, whoever wants to um, come and visit, 
uh, I can share the concept uh, to, to you and then you can post on your on your channels so people can reach out to you and then they can uh, fill out your application. They can validate it that they can they can come in this uh, buyer program and enjoy host, enjoy the show and enjoy Milan. We will. That's a, I love it. We will put the link, Tommaso or I, we'll put the link both on LinkedIn yeah. in the comments, also in our Facebook group. By the way, if you're just joining us, you've got Tommaso here. He is with Thompson Hospitality. He is uh, representing, he's the ambassador, one of the ambassadors in the United States for Host Milano. We're talking all things Host Milano tonight. And speaking of, people went on the buyer program and fell in love. Look at our friend Shannon Talon, who's here. I had an amazing experience at Host in 2019, thanks to the Buyer dele Delegation Program. Tommaso is the best ambassador. I love it. Hi, Thank Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. It was, uh, it was great. The 2019 was another great show. We had a lot of fun. But every year is the best show. And I'm sure 2023 is going to be the best year and the best show again. And I really look forward to see many of the familiar face of friends and colleagues that they saw in the, all this year to come back and uh, and do it again. And I really look forward to see more and more people coming to the show and enjoy the show and have fun at the show. I bet. You know, here's I'm a great there. question. This is um, this is one of our Cowbell reps and good friends, Michael Corsier up in Michigan. Do reps attend? Mm -hmm. And here's what I would say. Look at this. Suzanne Brown is responding. This is the best ever. Yes, lots of reps attend. I've been fortunate to attend three times so far. That is awesome, Suzanne. Yes. Um, here's what else I would say. Uh, Cow Mill is going to be, we're going to get a booth. We're going to be an exhibitor at Host Milano for the first time ever as we look to continue to grow internationally. So um, you get to see that. Mike, as I think about some of your lines, Churchill, I saw Nick from Steel Lights on here. There are various, so many manufacturers that are selling in the States that come from overseas, of course. Yeah. And so um, it'll undoubtedly be a place that they are all exhibiting to go learn, go learn just a different element. We we often get to work with the you know American sales managers and, and divisions of these organizations. But of course, they've got European and various ones that you get to learn from, hear a different story, get a different idea of how the product is made. So that's a really great question, Mike. No, um, and, and I think like I want to really stress to the fact that uh, is a learning experience. It's definitely something that you're gonna um, uh, take with you and uh, and learn from that. And also, is a place where you can understand the trend of the future in the industry, the hospitality. You see what's going what will going on in the next year or two years. And uh, especially because it's a show that happens every every two years, it's really a showcase for for company to to bring their news um, during the event. Great, great call. I mean, we're all looking for the trends. We all want to see what's coming next and what other people are doing. So this is a great way to do this. What is, what's the tip for arrival date to successfully acclimate to the time difference from the U.S.? He's coming, uh, William's coming from the West Coast, California. Super to meet you, Tommaso. Love it. Uh, thanks, Jason, for sharing the info. Great question. So the show dates, by, I'm going to let Tommaso take over in a minute, but show dates are... October 13th through the 17th. So show starts on a Friday, ends on a Tuesday, correct? Correct, exactly. Five days of shows. And if you really want to walk the old show, five days are not enough. So I really advise to pick what you want to see, at least for the first time, and and, and just see well what, what you want to see. Because to see all the pavilion in five days, it will require like 20,000 steps per day mission on five days in a row. So it's definitely a good exercise and, and training. And training, not only uh, professional training, but it's going to be also a physical training. I love it. So what is, I mean, for people who haven't traveled internationally or Italy, yes. what, um, I don't know, should they show up a day early, two days early to get so time? I always to recommend it not to do it uh, too professional, like eat and go. So, I mean, you're already taking the time to fly across the ocean. You're taking the time to acclimate to like six hour or nine hour difference. And, and you are in Italy in, in October, in one of the best countries of the world. Not, not because I'm Italian, but because I think it actually is. Yeah. And uh, it is one of the best time of the year because right now, even this year, beginning of October is fantastic. So just, just really enjoy it because it's, it's stay, stay come a few days earlier or stay a few days extra. And, and, and take the opportunity to visit uh, cities around Milan or around Italy or even, even Europe. Everything in Europe is on a three hours flight. So if, if from Milan, you can go anywhere in, in, in Europe with the same time that you would fly from Miami to New York. So everything is so close. So I really recommend to take advantage. And if you do four days at the show, 
add another four or five days before and after. The world is not going to end if you take a week of vacation. Actually, you're going to really enjoy it. And it's, gonna, it's really worth it. I love it. This is a man who understands we're a community about balance and uh, work-life balance, enjoying the ride. So yeah. he spoke incredibly well. This is our buddy Sean Tanner from Winston. Are you kidding me? Having spent uh, many years in the international food service community, I highly encourage anyone that can attend host to do so. It's a perspective on the business that you can't get anywhere else. Sean, great words, man. Great words. Um, Tommaso, for those that haven't been to Italy or Milan, is there, do you have a favorite restaurant that when you go over, you make sure you always eat at? Uh, I mean, this is going to be a very difficult question. Uh, it's, there's, there's so many good places uh, in Milan that I wouldn't give justice just to mention one. Uh, there, there, and also, there's a lot of small places that you just walk around in, in the center by the Duomo, which is the cathedral. And there's really great small restaurants uh, where you can go. Uh, the big difference is in Italy, the restaurants open for lunch between noon and two and a dinner between seven and ten. So if you want to have a lunch at three o'clock, forget about it. Or if you want to have a dinner at midnight, that's not the place. So, but there's so many nice uh, restaurants. And and another good thing, so October is in the middle of truffle season. So if you like white truffle, is the perfect time. Uh, is the perfect time of the year. And this is again another thing. You at the show and then you walk around Milan at night. It's just it's just uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, a few years ago, at the same time, there was some. Uh, MTV Music Awards in the Duomo. So after the show, we went there. It was just a phenomenal experience. Uh, a few years ago, so there was Expo. The Expo was next to uh, to host uh, the World Expo. Uh, it was it was it was very good. But as as far as food, uh, it's very difficult that you go wrong in a city like Milan. I, I uh, can't imagine. Let me ask you this. Um, you said it's not just exhibitors, right? There's some of the best chefs in the world coming in, in the competitions, the um, you know pastry competitions and all these different yeah. things you mentioned. Are they? D does Host Milano also host conversations, you know, yeah. dialogue around trends, around maybe it's gas versus electric, maybe it's about shrinking footprints in the kitchen. Are those kind of conversations happening as well? Yes, there's definitely um, an unparalleled series of workshops during during the host. Uh, and uh, one of the main, uh, I mean, they still are working on that, but one of the main subjects uh, this year would be about, of course, sustainability, uh, which is which is very big. Um, it's also very big about digitalization and digital transformation of the industry and of, of the restaurants. So yes, the workshop, the talks, it's, it's very, it's very big. Because again, it's part of the training part of uh, of Host Milan. I love it, Chris East, our buddy down in Dallas. Host is a great adventure, and Lake Como doesn't suck. Lake wow. Como is very nice, but there's also Lago Maggiore, which is very similar, if not even nicer than Lake Como. Not as famous as Lake Como, but I would really recommend. And it's like an hour train ride from Milan, and I definitely recommend you to go there. What is that one, Tommaso? Lago Maggiore. Lago Maggiore. Yes, it's like one hour uh, west uh, from uh, from Milan. He has beautiful islands, uh, botanical gardens, coastals. It's very nice place. Amazing. This is great. Yeah. Um, so people can sign up to um, to be a part of the buyer program, number one. We're going to post that link yes. um, as well. I would encourage any reps, dealers, talk to your manufacturers. Who's showing over there? Um, you might ask, like, what, 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 what do you want me to go learn? Um, as well. And then for anyone in our community who chooses to go, maybe we do something, you're going to be walking a lot. It's going to be wonderful. That I mean, how else are you going to burn off the gelato that you're going to be crushing in that pavilion? Yeah. So uh, maybe we'll even do 30 days ahead of time. We'll work our step counts up. We'll get step counts up so people can go wear comfortable shoes. Obviously we're not rookies, but you know, don't wear new shoes, etc. cetera. Um, and another thing you can do since uh, there's so many manufacturers in Europe of products that are brought into the U S it's another very good opportunity to visit factories either mm -hmm. before or after the event. So talk with your manufacturers, talk with your supplier, and you can definitely organize a visit uh, in Italy, in Germany, in France, in Spain, wherever they are. And again, it's another fantastic learning experience because visit, I always love to visit factories because I always learn something new when, when I see the factory. And I really, and then you appreciate the value of a product. And then a lot of time we bring the clients to see the factories. 
And the best things when you do that is that they never complain about price anymore because they realize the value of the products. And for them, it's just realizing what, what you're showing them and what you're doing. You know, there's nothing like getting to visit a factory in person and recognizing, get a whole new understanding about what that manufacturer is really about. Um, yeah. You get to meet the people, you get to experience the culture, you get to see them, how they make things. I know when we host people at Calmel, it's so wonderful. And so many manufacturers in the States do it. And even overseas, I know my friend, Bobby Moshe, who's a part of this community, he might be on tonight, went uh, last host. I think they went to Maiko ahead of time up in Germany, perhaps. Yeah. And then I think came down to host and certainly the rationales. I mean, so many manufacturers will be probably collaborating, coordinating different trainings for their reps and their customers ahead of time. So um, that's another great call. Really make it a trip. You spend a little personal time, friends, go to host and go learn there. But also if you have a factory or two um, or you're a distributor and you've got a big significant partner over there, go take the time, go meet the people. They want to meet you. Remember, we're a relationship business. Jeremy Matola, count me in on the 30 day program prior. Yes, we're going to get our steps in. So that by the time we're ready to do uh, 20,000 steps a day, we are good. And in fact, I think what should be a part of it is before we do the 20,000 steps, we should do two espressos and then a gelato at the end. That way we're really training, Jeremy. That's how I feel. That's the program. Tommaso, listen, um, I'm beyond fascinated and excited. Now, for a couple minutes, yeah. fill us in on you, man. I mean, you have a you're you're, you're a dealer down in Florida. You work yes. in, in certainly Florida. You do a lot with cruise lines. Yes. You do a lot internationally. You're with the uh, Italy Italy American Chamber of Commerce. You're an ambassador for Host Milano. You've got a family with four kiddos. I don't even know where to begin, but how do you do it? How do you manage juggling all of these things and, and doing them well? I think the key is really enjoying what you do and have a passion for what you do. And even have different things, having fun doing them. I always have fun doing those things. Yeah. Uh, even sometimes it can have some stressful situation, but you always have to look at the, at the fun part. And you always have to think why you start doing that and why you're doing and then I think it's, it's a great motivation from, uh, from that. Uh, the Italy America Chamber of Commerce is, was the opportunity for me to come into the U.S. because it was this like three months internship. And then they gave me the opportunity to, um, to work in the U.S. They gave me the opportunity to get my first uh, uh, visa, which is, I mean, for, for a North American, it's not very easy to get in this country. So, and it was my first uh, working experience in the, in the U.S. So I was very thankful to, for, to, for, to that organization uh to give me that opportunity mm -hmm. and uh, after about 15 years after being like, like an, uh, an intern there and then working there i had the opportunity to get involved uh, again in the board of director where i was and then i had the opportunity to to be elected president and and i'm happy to to give some time uh, to helping uh, italian business coming to the us helping uh, italian uh, network create a network here in the U.S. and helping them succeed in this market. And it's a way for me to give back uh, what I received at the beginning of my career because it was a, this huge opportunity that I'm very thankful and just giving some of my time to the Chamber of Commerce. It's just a very nice way to give back to me, to, to, to this organization and the, and the community. And, and, and I'm, I'm happy to help, um, to help, uh, to help people. Uh, I mean, my, my, I, I love doing my job uh, and I, I, it's another key. I mean, it's, it can be long days, uh, long trips. I mean, I was just traveling until, I mean, I land back in Chicago uh, last night of up past midnight and I left Friday, um, but I really enjoy what I do. And, uh, and I always see the, the fun part uh, of, of this. I mean, family, family helps. Um, sometimes I have four kids. Sometimes I feel I'm the fifth kid uh, <laughs> because I mean, my, my wife, she's doing an amazing job and uh, she's mm -hmm. basically the, the, the trick. Uh, for me or how I can handle the, the family because a lot of time I'm, I'm away. I mean, when I go to Italy, for example, for host, between the time before and the visit to the factories and other things, I'm even easily away more two weeks or something like this. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's not easy. But uh, again, it's, it's fun. I always like the relationship with our clients. I love the relationship with our manufacturers. Uh, this is a, more, a small industry. I think uh, it's very small. And, and they really, I really like the relationship that you build uh, with people that might change a company, might, might change manufacturer, might change operator, but at the end, they're friends. And then you do business with friends. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, I think it's, it's one of the best things, having fun, enjoying that. And it's, uh, I think it's, I think that's the key. You know, I think you, you really hit on something, this idea of having fun. 
um, because you get your hands in so many things. You're a part of so many cool things, contributing at such a high level, giving back, volunteering time. I mean, all of these things that you do, it's hard to do that if you're not having fun. And I think a, a fair amount of people ask me, how do I have my cow milk job? How do I do power plant stuff? All of this um, and have a family. It's because all of it brings joy. I mean, yeah. truly, it, you know, it's not always easy. Um, and sometimes you're working later than that, all of these things, but really all of it's so gratifying. The The team at Cal Mill is the funnest team to work with. I love it. What I do with Power Plant, getting to talk to people like Tommaso or learn about Host Milano or all the different covers, it's all so fun. It's important to love what you do. And an, I, I would offer an encouragement for anyone watching is, I hope you get to love what you do. You might not love it every moment of the day, of course, right? Yeah. There's minutia, there's details, there's, you know, I don't, I haven't met it. I've met a couple that love Excel spreadsheets, not a ton, but, um, but you know, there's parts that we have to do, but overall, hopefully you love the experience. And I love what you say too. It's about the people. It really is about the relationships. These people become your friends. So when we're traveling together and we're doing these things, we're breaking bed with people we care for, who we get to share conversation and learn yeah. how you doing as a human being. I hope your business is great. Tell me what you're learning. Um, but also, how are you as a person? What does it look like to support you? All of these things. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's hospitality all the way in, in the chain. It's not only hospitality to at the end of the chain to our end users, but I think there's a feeling of hospitality through the chain, from the manufacturer to the end users, between manufacturer, reps, uh, distributors. It's, it's part of our style. It's part of our lifestyle. And, uh, and I just love it. And also, it's a very... It's a very easy industry to enjoy the time that you are working and to enjoy the time that, that you spend working. I mean, I when I used to work with Italian companies selling pots and pen across uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, I, I was t talking with somebody who was complaining about traveling so much. And I say, hey, basically, I'm going working where people go having vacation. Yeah. So great yeah, call. It's, it's, it's a big value of, of that. It's all about the perspective you have on it. Someone looks at it, oh, I could never do that. It's too much traveling. And you look at it like, you know what? I'm going to the most, some of the most beautiful places in the world to yeah. get to hang out and provide solutions <laughs> to some of the most amazing people on the planet. Um, and we consider ourselves fortunate to do that. Um, okay, uh, quick question. Two, two final questions. Um, what would you say, I'm going to go back to Host Milano in this. Yes. You're in Europe a fair amount. You're from Italy. Yes. And you're, obviously, you live in the U.S., what would you say is the great, is there, is there something you could pinpoint as the greatest or one of the biggest differences between, you know, the U S and Europe in terms of their mindset around food service? Um, yes. I mean, there's definitely two different approach to, to the market. Um, I think, uh, in, in Europe, um, especially in Italy, you know, Spain, uh, probably the more the Mediterranean area, um, it's, uh, it's easier to just slow down and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to hospitality and food service, I mean, you have your uh, proper lunch, your proper dinner. Uh, you really enjoy that part uh, and that element uh, of, of the life. Um, I mean, in the US, sometimes you don't, you don't have a lunch. I mean, you, you feed yourself, which is a different experience. Uh, so that, that approach is, is, is a little bit different. And a very big example is, I mean, deliveries has been always big in, in the U.S., uh, the delivery. I mean, of course, they have been growing in the last year for, uh, for different reasons. But in, in Europe, they have been growing tremendously now because people are discovering and they were something they were not discovering uh, um, before. Uh, so this is another, another big difference. Um, the, the approach to the food, the structure of the market is different. Uh, uh, here we have distributors that they have all the brands. So you think of the biggest distributor, they have every single brand possible out there. Uh, in Europe is different. It's just, they're just distributors. They have just a few brands and like they wear the shirts of that brand and they play like they're part of the team of that, of that brand. So the approach to the market, it's, uh, is per se a little bit different in, uh, in that, um, variety of the product. Uh, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's different uh, in that case, you might have some, some, some variety. Um, but they're, they're two world, uh, they are both attractive, uh, in, uh, in different way. And, and I think, uh, again, it's good a balance because sometimes in Europe, they slow down too much. And sometimes in the U S we just go too fast and we never slow down. Even when we choose slow down, I mean, definitely you complain in August when you try to get something from Europe and everything is shut down until September and there's nothing you can do. And it's very difficult to explain to people in this side of, of the world. 
Uh, but at the same time, I think it is important to find the right balance and, and, and enjoy and enjoy life. And then the more the more we grow, the more the markets are similar, the more the, the mar market become global. I mean, yeah. you have operator in the US, they start opening, uh, uh, they start opening uh, in uh, in Europe and, and vice versa. I mean, in the last year we have been uh, experiences and we part of project like the first W10 in Rome and we were part of that project and it was like an amazing uh, uh, experience because it was the first time that brand came, came into the S or more and more other brands are, are coming. I mean, for example, right now, Rome is exploding. I was reading an article today. They're going to open in the next two years, 10 new luxury hotels uh in rome and you would think rome it's already well equipped as far as hotels so there's the, and a lot of them are american brands they are coming in uh, in that market and, and and facing the market and they are they have to change uh their approach to the market and, and i experience on the other way around they have a lot of um, company from italy they come into the us and they want to teach how to eat and it doesn't work like that. You need to adapt your menu. You need to adapt the way you approach the market and, and find again the the correct balance to that. Because every every market, every area, it's is different, and the right balance is the right success. I so appreciate those differences that you recognize and learning how to balance both. I remember as a rep years ago, we had a couple of manufacturers over in Europe, and you're right. Like in August, things kind of shut down for three weeks no, no, or a month. Kind. Or you can remove the kind; they shut down. <laughs> Everybody goes vacation. Everybody go to the seaside, to the mountain, August 1st. See you back in September. Yeah, but my order. Yeah, yeah, we will process it. First week of September. And then September, there is some time to start again. I mean, it, it, I'm a little bit exaggerating. It's reducing. But yes, I mean, for at least the two middle week of August, there's nothing you can do in uh, in Italy for sure because everything is shut down. Trucks cannot go around. So it's, you can you are forced to enjoy to enjoy life, which is, again, okay. I'm, I'm not complaining about that unless I'm on the other side and I need products. Sure. No, I, I love that. I love their commitment. And it's funny that we do at times need to force ourselves to slow down, but I love that Europe does that. Okay. Let me ask with our final question. We ask almost everybody define success for us. Um, you're contributing at such a significant level. You're all around the world. You're in Europe, you're in Chicago, you're in Florida, like all within like a two week period often. Um, how do you define success, Tommaso? I mean, success, uh, it is a word that has been like the decline in different way and probably abuse and, and looking at different point of view. I think that my approach is that we all work for the same reason. Okay. And the reason is that we work to live better. We don't live to work, which is a very small difference, but it's a huge difference. And, and then, I mean, your, your, your live better could be go, I mean, playing golf. Mine could be, go sailing or whatever, but that's the things we work to live better. So if we can do that, having fun, if we can do that, enjoying what, what we do and have a passion for what we do and, and, and feeling, uh, uh, satisfied, I think that, uh, that is success is, is not, is not, it, there's not a measure of success i think it's mm -hmm. uh i mean it's not about the money you make it's not amount the hours that you work it's not amount amount things that you can measure i think success is a feeling mm -hmm. and uh, and you need to be aligned and you need to feel that what you're doing is uh, is feel uh, your uh, your purpose okay mm -hmm. it's just uh, uh something that is, is 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 meant to happen to you and 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 you enjoy doing uh, doing that i mean and I, I've been studying Latin for five years so during my high school in Italy. And I mean, success coming from successus, which is a, a Latin word, and means something that happened. Okay. And it doesn't have like an either a positive or a negative connotation. It's just something that happened. Okay. So it's just the outcome on an undertaking. Okay. So uh, it's, I, I would say that success is, that is an accomplishment, I mean, it's defined as an accomplishment of a target. But you need to ask yourself, what's your target? What's your aim? Yeah. How you enjoy life, and then if you if you hit the target on your enjoy life in the way you want, and I mean making a living, then you're successful. Uh, Tommaso, I love that. I love that in Latin, it isn't positive or negative. Um, it's an event that happened. I love that. Um, I we I wrote it down. We work to live better. Um, you gotta have fun. We don't, we don't live to work. Um, we work. And I always to, work. Went to my people, I mean, people that work with me and, and it's very important because 
if if you're happy and then if you do if you enjoy what you're doing uh you definitely also are more productive and you work better and it's, yeah it's, it's just it just again it's not a matter of a schedule it's not a matter of things you do it just doing and enjoy and then you will do it because nobody will force you because you're enjoying doing that you're right when you love it when you know why when you have your why I, there's so many points you hit on there this is our buddy todd strader todd yo brother love hearing so many different perspectives it's so enlightening so fresh and inspiring heck yes tomaso we end every conversation uh sometimes we sneak it up on people that don't know it's coming but with what we call encouraging words um and so this is just um now tonight's kind of a twofer because we were talking a little bit about you and a lot about host Milano. So I'm going to give some encouraging words on host Milano. And then I'm going to get you real quick from some of your friends. Uh, oh, look at this. This is our friend Bolt. Thank you for the juicy tidbits of positivity tonight. Tommaso brought it. You weren't messing around. That was amazing. Um, okay. Our, our buddy Brad Pierce was one of our friends to pump up and, and give some encouraging words to the entire host Milano team. Great job, host Milano team. You're, I'm assuming they might be asleep right now because I don't even know what time yeah. it is in Milan. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, almost 3 a.m. So most almost likely. 3 a.m. Okay, they'll see it in the morning. They'll see it in the morning. Yeah, they will. Um, oh, I've been attending every host since 2015, yet I'm still amazed by the enormous size and breadth of products showcased. It's like a never-ending treasure hunt discovering new products and vendors at every turn. The host show is a get things done business event. It's a place where every moment from dusk until dawn feels wildly productive and interactions with both new and existing vendor partners are rock solid. Highly recommend. And I plan on attending this October as well. I hope we'll see you there, Brad. I love it. I don't know. If I Brad think they should it. make Brad the honorary ambassador of host because I mean, he's doing a much better job than me promoting <laughs> host. So Brad would be another great ambassador. And oh, I wonder, I, I don't know if Brad flies his plane across the Atlantic. No, no, no. I was joking with him about it. And uh, no. No. Okay. Not flying. All right. All right. Uh, well, then, Brad, maybe I'll end up on a plane with you. Um, Mike Colligan. Uh, Mike is up in the Virginia area with Hi Sabatino. I was at host in October of 2019. It's like 10 times the size of anything I've seen. The sheer breadth of products and technology are a prediction of the future products to come to the U.S. and North America, like Tommaso mentioned. I found that there were so many brilliant products that don't exist in the U.S. yet because of requirements for UL certifications, lack of production infrastructure, etc. There were two entire buildings devoted to both to coffee, brewing, and roasting. There are buildings dedicated to furniture, tabletop, equipment, gelato. The, the organization and the execution of the host team is first rate. Um, Mike, great comments about host, man. Love it, love it, love it. Um, okay, very valuable conversation. Thanks to host, Tommaso and host Milano. Tommaso, here's where we get you. Uh, I got two encouraging words from some of your industry friends. Our good friend who we share in common, who I think is still watching tonight, unless he went to bed, Jeremy Matola. Um, Jeremy had some words. He said, you know, I've known Tommaso for 10 years, but I feel like I've known him forever. We reach out to each other on holidays. We talk business. We talk life. And he's just an all around great guy and a really special person to have as a friend. My Thank first you. trip to host Milano... I went to a store and I had my son, our names put on the back of two jerseys of the local football club. I sent a picture to Maso thinking he would be so proud. And he let me know that there were actually two teams in Milano. And clearly I had picked the wrong team and he wasn't sure our friendship could continue. There's Inter FC and there's AC Milan. Yes, Tommaso? No, there's only Inter Milan. The other one is the second team <laughs> of Milan that... There we go. Well played. Touche. Um, anytime I'm in South Florida, I make sure I stop into his office. I check out the Vespa parked and we find a way to connect. Oh, look, he is here. So good. He's That's there. Really Vespa, yes. In, uh, um, Jeremy, thanks for your encouragement. Thank you, Jeremy. And next time have a better taste in shirts, please. <laughs> uh, next, Jer thanks to Jeremy for connecting me with Dieter. Dieter Zhao? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, Life is an exciting journey with ups and downs and not as often as we would like, but uh, not as often as we'd like. Sometimes we're blessed to meet someone special. I've been fortunate to have met Tommaso during my time, and I can only be thankful for that. He's a positive influence, not just for his family, but for all who surround him, including me. 
Tomasu is undoubtedly very business savvy. And interestingly enough, this is not the quality I admire most about him. It's his generosity and his desire to do what's right that makes him a desirable rarity. Thank you, Tommaso, and blessings on our journeys. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's really nice. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, Tommaso, I mean, an honor <laughs> is an understatement. Uh, what a gift. Uh, I just want to add something, and uh, I think it's another part of, I think, the success. Um, I think if you if we have time, I mean, uh, if we, uh, I think one of the biggest obstacles in our industry yeah. and in a lot of other industry is the lack of trust, okay? Mm. There's a lot of lack of trust because, I don't know, clients that they want to share information with the supplier because they think they're taking advantage of them. Supplier, they don't want to share information with the client because they think they're going buying the same thing online cheaper or things like this. So this, this lack of trust uh, creates a lot of extra work needed on both sides. At least they think that they need extra work because there's this lack of trust to build defenses, okay? And this is like a big effort. And, and I don't believe in that. I believe that there should be trust. Uh, you should I mean, take a risk to expose yourself a little bit more, remove these useless barriers, and, and, and try to build relationships that are based on, on trust and doing the right things. Because you can achieve, I think, two, two big things. First of all, you do things in an easier way. Uh, in a better way and easier, so you can enjoy what you're doing, and then you do faster and quicker and with more pleasure, and you have more time to do other things that you like. So this yeah. is make things much much easier, and then you build something that really lasts uh, for for the long term. I love it. You know, trust is a word that sometimes gets thrown around, but it's hard. To, it's, it's not something that you can always define, but something you feel. You know it when you experience it with people, and I'm really glad you called that out because. It seems like my perception is, my hope is that through COVID, a time of incredible isolation, um, that it forced us to either recognize who we trusted because we would only move forward in that time of fear with people that we really valued. And my hope is that that's something we as an industry learned. Uh, brilliantly said, says Shannon, lean into the relationships you built and trust your partners. You know, there's a uh, a quote I thought about a few years ago, I gave a talk down in Florida and this idea that relationship, our relationships, mine and Tommaso, or mine and Shannon, Shannon's and Tommaso, Jeremy, et cetera, our relationship is the result of surviving a risk with other people, with another person, right? Tommaso, you and I a year ago didn't know each other. If you'd see me in the street and I tried to stop and say hi, you might've said hi, but you would have kept moving to go to the next gelato stand or whatever. Um, but now we've engaged in, uh, we've taken some risks together. We pulled off a live interview in front of the industry tonight and it went great. And so now there's greater levels of trust. Shannon and I, you know, all, all of these people that we're all connected with, so many of us, the, the more opportunities you get to take, friends, to survive a risk with another person, the greater your opportunity to have depth of relationship. And sometimes that's quantity of risk. We take lots of small risks together, and sometimes that's quality of risk. And that looks like having a really honest conversation, or once you build some level of foundational trust, as Tommaso talks about, taking it the next level and saying, listen, I got something going on. I don't know how to handle this. It feels quite vulnerable, but would you be willing to listen? Whatever those things are. And that creates moments of trust and relationship. But the bigger the trust, the lesser the risk. Uh, you know what? Great point. Yeah, you're right. The long, the, the deeper the relationship, the less risky it is to take that. That's a great, great point. Um, you and I can have a deeper conversation now and talk about more things than we would have a year ago. Um, you know, et, et cetera, all of these things. Jeremy Matola, I've known Jeremy for like 12 years. So at this point, our relationship is quite honest and real and genuine because we've taken all those steps along the way. And it isn't, um, it isn't a risk anymore because you're right. There's trust there. Really well said. Holy smokes. Uh, Bill agrees too. Well said. And claps. Lots of claps. Um, listen, Food Service Power Plant Network. So many takeaways. First of all, I hope you're going to join us at Host Milan. We will come up with a walking plan, a, an espresso walking gelato plan through 30 days before Host Milano. So we all get our steps in. We're all feeling ready by the time we show up. 
Uh, I hope you go over there. We will post Tommaso or I it might, I don't know if I'll have it tonight, but we'll get it in the next day in yeah. the group, uh, both on LinkedIn and in the Facebook group, the link, if you want to sign up for host Milan, or you want to learn more about the buyer program, uh, by the way, if you're joining us from LinkedIn, hi, welcome. Know that we've got a community of over 2,200 food service professionals on Facebook. If you're a Facebook person and you want to be a part of something that feels bigger, that's encouraging, that offers positive mindset tools, go check out Food Service Power Plant Network. It's a group, not the page. Go check out the group. We'll welcome you in and share any things that are lifting you up. Uh, you can show support for your industry friends. We love to celebrate wins of so many of our industry friends. Mike Nugent, yo, brother, what's up? Um, and I would say, I mean, so many things, but uh, we work to live better. Here's my takeaway. Um, let's work to live better, to have fun. Here's a guy who's crushing right now. He's all, all, all co many continents, uh, running a million miles per hour, getting to serve everywhere he is because in all of it, he finds joy. Whether it's his family, his Thompson Hospitality, Host Milano, Italian American Chamber of Commerce, all of these wonderful, wonderful things. Um, so if you don't have something right now that you love, that you think is fun, it's a blast, I would encourage you to go find it. Maybe it's in the ter terms of a new role in your organization. Maybe it's a new relationship you want to cultivate. Maybe it's a hobby you want to have. I don't know what those things are for you, but go have something that makes you come alive. I think it's an inherent element of life and enjoying the journey from Tommaso and I to you. Um, I hope you too. You get it. Who's this? Todd Strader. To write on Shannon's comments, there's nothing more important than building and maintaining relationships. This is how partnerships for life are built. I love our industry. Todd, we are uh, we are fortunate people to get to be in food service. We really, really are. Um, everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope we'll see you next week. Tommaso, thanks again, my friend. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. And I, I want to see you guys in Milan. You got it. We'll be there. We'll be there. Hopefully, we'll see a bunch of friends. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good night.